Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss about inductors. Basically an inductor is another passive element in electrical circuit. It is nothing but a coil or a winding which is wound on any particular thing. So let us talk about physical representation of inductor. As I have said you, it is nothing but a coil wound on certain medium. The medium can be an iron bar, it can be a mica, it can be an oil surface or anything like that. So this is how a physically an inductor looks when you go more deeper into it. So this, uh, the inductance is the property of an inductor. So here you can see the windings of the number of turns. So and you can see the cross-sectional area and you can see the length. Basing on these parameters, the inductance is given by L is equal to mu A n squared divided by L where mu is permeability of the medium on which the windings are being bound, whether it is an air, oil, or core, iron, or silicon iron, or something like that. So permeability is going to be decided by mu. Area of the cross-section of the inductor is going to be decided by A. The number of terms are designated by N, and it is equal to square of the N, and divided by the length, the total length of that element inductor. So L is equal to mu A N squared by L is the physical representation of the inductor. So if you can take any element and make windings on it by using this formula, you can find the inductance of that material. The circuit representation of the inductor is written like this as like a coil and the unit of inductor is or the property inductance is Henry's. Now coming to the magnetic equations are the equations which follow the inductor is the flux linkages. So whenever you pass current through any coil, there will be a flux produced and there will be flux linkages. The flux linkages are given by psi is equal to n into phi. So flux linkages, uh, uh, it is nothing but the flux which links with every part of the coil. As there are n turns, so there will be n number of, of flux linkages. So n into phi would be the flux linkages. But the flux is proportional to current passing through. Basically, we talk about an electromagnetic material the flux is uh, proportional to the current. So how much current you give, that much amount of flux is being produced. As you can see here, the flux linkage is directly proportional to the flux. So in place of flux, I write it as flux linkage psi. Psi is proportional to I. So in between psi and I, we come across a proportionality constant called psi is equal to L into I. So basically as like in Ohm's law, V is equal to R into I. Here also we have flux linkages, psi is equal to Li. So where L is called as proportionality constant. Now after knowing about this, we'll come across how the voltage is developed across an inductor and how the current passing through the inductor is being found out. So we'll start it by using Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. V is equal to N into D phi by D. But as like we have seen here, so, so V is equal to D, then goes inside V is equal to D by DT of N into phi. We have just seen previously like N phi is equal to psi. So I substitute psi in my equation, V is equal to D by DT of psi, but psi is equal to L into I as like the last equation. L is the proportionality constant between psi and I. So that's the reason I keep in place of psi, I substitute L into I. We get a very, very important equation called V is equal to L into Di by DT. This V stands for voltage across the inductor and L is the inductance and I is the current passing through the inductor. This equation is so important like it is used in first order systems or in order to use the, or in order to find out the voltage drop across the inductor. Now, based on this equation, I find out the current passing through the inductor. So V is equal to L into Di by DT. From this equation, I derive out how I find out current passing through inductor by just using mathematics. So V by L is equal to Di by DT. So I just you know interchange the equations. Di by DT is equal to V by L. I integrate the equation on both sides. So differentiation of the integration becomes I. And here V by L is there. So integration of V by L into DT. As L is a proportionality constant, it comes out. Here comes another important equation, which is called as the current passing through the inductor, which is given by I is equal to one by L integration of V into dT. So once we know voltage and current, we come across if they are connected in series, how the equivalent would be, if they are connected in parallel, how the equivalent would be. 
So in this diagram, you can see n number of inductors which are connected in series, like L1, L2, L3, so on up to Ln. When they are connected in series, the equivalent is L equivalent is equal to L1 plus L2 plus L3, so on up to Ln. So this is just like you know series combination of your resistor. Now you can see here n number of inductors are connected in parallel. So it is given by 1 by L equivalent is equal to as like the resistor goes 1 by L1 plus 1 by L2 plus 1 by L3 plus so on up to 1 by Ln. Here I want to discuss with you very uh, very important concept like in series current is going to be same and voltages are going to vary. And so in for series circuit we use voltage division method. So in the dual way or in generally saying in an opposite way in parallel circuit it is almost opposite to it. As in series current is same in parallel voltage will be same. In series voltage varies in parallel voltage is going to remain same and current is going to vary. In parallel we use current division method and these topics are being discussed in the first video of the resistor. Now after that, what is the energy stored in an inductor? So inductor is an element which stores energy. So it stores energy in the form of magnetic field because we are getting flux, which is a magnetic flux. It stores energy in the form of magnetic field and it never dissipates energy in the form of heat as like a resistor. And the energy stored by the inductor is given by the equation, which is equal to half Li square. So the energy units are joules because it stores energy in the magnetic field. And in future uh, videos, we'll see like the power in the inductor is going to be zero. As like you can take it as a statement here, the power in the inductor is zero. In the future, whenever we deal with AC circuits, we'll discuss like why the power in the inductor is equal to zero. So now let me conclude with everything. So inductors, the voltage across the inductor is given by L into di by dt. And the current passing through the inductor, here initial conditions are given. So whenever current passing through the inductor is given by 1 by L integration of V into dt, you can say the second term. And what is the DC equivalent? Whenever we give a DC supply to an inductor, it becomes like a short circuit. Regarding to this, you'll study about it in your first order systems. So when they are connected in series, what happens? When inductances are connected in series, it becomes L1 plus L2 plus L3, so on up to Ln. When they are connected in parallel, so if two are connected in parallel, it becomes like L1, L2 divided by L1 plus L2. When N are connected in parallel, it becomes 1 by Ln is equal to 1 by L1 plus 1 by L2 plus 1 by L3, so on up to 1 by Ln. And what is the amount of stored energy in the inductor? The stored energy in the inductor is given by half Li square. So that is how the inductors are going to be. Here you can see n number of inductors basically. They are all like coils, like number of turns, which are designated by n, which are being wound like the circular things are called as uh, solenoids and the rectangular things. We mostly use it in the transformers. And the inductors play a major role in your fans, in your motors, in your electromechanical devices actually. So uh, inductors are also called as a pa another passive element in an electrical circuit. And with this, we'll close the session. Thank you all.